So in this video, we're going to start talking about boundary conditions uh, in electromagnetism. And first of all, what are boundary conditions and why do we care about them? Uh, well, say I've got some radiator over here and it's generating some electromagnetic waves. And then maybe I've got some objects. So I've got this lump over here. I've got this uh, thing over here. And maybe these are made out of different materials. So maybe this has a certain permittivity and it's a dielectric. Uh, maybe this has a certain conductivity and it's a metal. And we'd like to know how these objects, like this, this red thing shaped kind of like a kidney bean here, um, interacts with the incoming electromagnetic field. And the way that we understand that, at least at first, is by analyzing what happens at the boundary. Uh, and so if we can figure out what happens at the boundary between some electromagnetic wave or in general some uh, electric field or magnetic field uh, and what's happening inside the object so what the electric field and magnetic field is inside the object for a given field outside the object then we can figure out uh, how the object is going to behave in this electromagnetic field and these boundary conditions are the foundation of a lot of different things so uh, many many fields or many many topics in optics uh, like thin film interference uh, or in general uh, reflection off of an interface uh, and its, subs its partner transmission. Um, you also need to understand this to understand waveguides and just how to solve electromagnetic problems in general uh, because if we have some known object and we have some known field, or we have at least some known source, so like a, a current density, for example, then unless we know the boundary conditions, we can't figure out what the fields in our system are going to be. And so they're really, really fundamental. So let's say I zoom in on this red object here. What will I see? Uh, well, this red object is gonna look less like a, a curvy thing and more just like a straight line. And that's awfully convenient. So. Let's say that this is all the material that I'm interested in, and this was the free space or some other dielectric to the left of the material. If I zoom in far enough, this interface is gonna start to look like a straight line. And so that's super convenient because we can break up any object into a bunch of really, really, really tiny straight lines. And so we're just gonna analyze the boundary conditions for a straight, uh, a straight line or a flat interface. So let's say that let's let's just make this a uh, in one along the horizontal direction, so that we don't have to worry about slantiness. And so on this side, we've got one material with a certain uh, dielectric constant and a certain permittivity, or a certain permittivity and a certain permeability. On this side, we've got also. Uh, maybe a different dielectric constant and a different permeability. And uh, this might be a metal, as we said it was before, with a certain conductivity. It might be a dielectric. It might be really anything. Um, the, the boundary conditions that we're going to talk about are valid for all materials. And let's also say that I know the electric field, or so I know the field outside of this um, on the on one side of this material so maybe it's pointing off in some direction I, I don't really know now if I zoomed in close enough on my object so we zoom in really really close um, the electric field is gonna be perfectly uniform so if it's pointing up and to the right at this point with some magnitude it's gonna be pointing the same exact direction with the same exact magnitude here and here and here and so the electric field um, is going to be constant on one side of the interface just because we've taken a small enough sample of that uh, of that original macroscopic object uh, as as long as we get in close enough the electric field has to be constant so maybe it's four volts per meter over here and it's, I don't know, 4.001 volts per meter over here. But then if I take an even smaller sampling of this, I can make the, I can make the difference between these two electric fields as tiny as I want, just by zooming in more and more and more. So we're going to assume that the electric field is constant on one side of the interface. Another thing you might notice is that we've got some serious symmetry going on here. 
So we've, we've just got a straight line here. And so it's probably going to be convenient to deal with the electric field that's tangential uh, to this interface and the electric field that's normal. And let me, let me erase these other electric field lines real quick. Um, so we're going to decompose this into two electric fields, one which is tangential and one which is normal to the uh, interface. And so these are just the components of the vector of the E field. And for now, we're just going to analyze the tangential component. So we're not going to worry about the normal component. Uh, we're just going to pretend that the electric field is only a tangential component. And uh, we're, we're just going to worry about the normal component, treat it separately, deal with it later. So for now, we're just worrying about this guy. And let's call this the tangential field in material one. So maybe this is material one and this is material two. Uh, material one in white, material two in red. And we'd like to relate this to the electric field just on the other side of the interface. So the tangential component in material two. And I'd like to relate this field uh, to this one. And how do I do it? Um, well, I'll give you a hint. And uh, let's, let's draw this out as the field, not just at one location, uh, but at all the locations next to the interface. So I've got a bunch of fields, or a field at a bunch of different points over here, which we said was all the same, and a field at a bunch of different points over here. So on one side of the interface and on the other side of the interface. And I'd like to relate these two. And so you might say, well, one thing I can do is uh, I've got Maxwell's equations, so I've got these in my pocket. Uh, and one of Maxwell's equations involves a line integral of the electric field. So integrating the electric field over a loop or over a closed loop. And so we might say, well, I'm just going to choose that loop so that it includes all of these fields. And so I'll get my tangential field on one side and I'll get my tangential field on the other side. And we know that this is equal to uh, the negative time derivative of the magnetic flux, so b dot ds, whatever uh, magnetic flux is flowing through the area of this loop. But I'm interested in the fields right on this side of the interface and right on the other side of the interface. So really, I don't want a loop. Um, I kind of want a line. I want to shrink this loop uh, as tightly as it'll go. So right down so it's encompassing the interface. Maybe it's just uh, getting a single atomic layer or maybe even less. Uh, and so this surface integral uh, is going to go to zero because our surface is going to go to zero as we have a loop that's basically just encompassing the interface itself. Um, that's got zero surface area. So no matter how big a B field I have, this side is going to be zero. So now I've just got the curve, uh, in the line integral of e dot dl is just equal to zero. And so we can just evaluate that on each side. So on this side, it's just e tan one times, uh, let's call this distance l times l. That's just the integral because it's, it's constant. So this just turns into a multiplication. And on this side, we've also got same distance l. Uh, but we're integrating in the opposite direction. So if we're integrating in this direction, then we've got uh, minus e tan 2 uh, times L. And this has to be equal to 0 if we've, make this, if we've made this loop infinitely small. And so uh, we can just cancel the L's from each side. And that's good because that was sort of arbitrary to begin with. And we can move, uh, move this guy on the other side. And we'll get that the tangential electric field in material one just has to be equal to the tangential uh, electric field in material two. And this is sort of beautiful because this is no matter what my material is. So I haven't said anything about what my material properties are uh, either here or here. And so independent of the material properties, this has to be true. And that's sort of crazy. That's, that's kind of wild that we can even do that. And so in the, this was the tangential component of the electric field. In the next video, we'll tackle the normal component of the electric field. And then that'll give us the entire electric field because you can always just decompose it into some tangential component and some normal component as long as you're working here 
uh, in two dimensions. You're just working in a plane. But even if you're not, even if you're working on, say, an entire surface, and you've got a bunch of different tangential electric fields uh, on this surface, maybe they're even pointing in different directions, um, and so this is material one, this is material two, um, then you know what the electric field has to look like right underneath each of those, uh, each of the your electric fields on the top surface. So this is one material and some other material. Uh, and these dotted arrows are supposed to be underneath the solid ones. And so uh, this is much more general than just a single interface. This tells you how things work uh, at any any time you've got some abrupt junction between one uh, one material and another material. This will work in three dimensions. It'll work however you want. As long as you can decompose your field, uh, which you, you always can, into a tangential component and a normal component. The tangential component can point in whatever direction it wants to along the surface, uh, and that, that will allow you to make any electric field out of just these two components. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.